Uh, thank you for joining me today. So today I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'm Alexandros Francis, I work for Collabora, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, an R&D project I've been working on at, at Collabora called the Pixel Format Guide, subtitle humorously, of course, to the galaxy. So um, I'm going to tell you what the Pixel Format Guide is, what it can do out of the box, and also how we can leverage its functionality to do some more custom things with it. So let's start. So in the graphics wilderness, we find strange beasts we call pixel formats. We give names to those pixel formats in order, in order to tame them. But the thing is that each graphics API and each um, project uses a different flavor for this name. So for example, we have the DRM formats, SDL, GL, and many, many, many more. Uh, the problem is that just by looking at the name, um, we often can get some idea of what uh, the pixel format actually is, uh, represented by the name, but we are missing a lot of information. And often the documentation is either lacking or vague, sometimes even misleading. And uh, the only way to figure out what's going on exactly is to look in source codes, and even then it can be very, very crazy. Um, so are we doomed? Do we have a solution to this? And the solution is this, or perhaps something like this for the pixel format guides. And actually, this is what the pixel format guide is all about. So it's um, a collection of information about what the various pixel format names mean. So uh, it describes the layout of the components um, uh, for pixel format names, so the number, the order, and the size and also describes um, whether the format is represented as a native integer or as an um, array format, as we call it, so, and, um, so bits and bytes in memory in some fixed order. This is very important because it determines whether the pixel format is actually, uh, the way the pixel format is stored in memory is affected by system emptiness or not, which is uh, a piece of information that's often missing uh, in documentation. So uh, let's start. So the first part of the pixel format guide is the documentation itself. It's a collection of documents describing the pixel format names at a high level. So for example here, don't have to read it, it's the start of the web page describing the DRM pixel formats. And the, uh, the documentation is uh, posted as a GitHub website, um, so it's automatically created from the repository. Uh, and it can be very useful when we want to get a broad overview of, of how to interpret pixel format names for a, spe a specific family. Uh, the issue here is that, uh, well, although it's quite useful, it's not actually not the most exciting part of the pixel format guide because we can do much, much more. With the power and the magic of computers, we can encode all this knowledge we have about the pixel formats and we can automate the process in the form of an uh, automated tool. And this is the second, the perhaps more, most exciting part of the Pixel Format Guide. So we have the Pixel Format Guide tool, which is a Python tool, which supports some operations, which I will describe uh, shortly. So starting from the bottom, you can see uh, the list formats. So f it lists all the formats we know about for a particular family. Uh, the list families, it knows, uh, it lists all the families we know about, and by fam family I mean SDL, DRM, Vulkan, GL, etc. And then we have the document operation, which prints out the documentation for the, a particular pixel format family, and this is actually the same documentation that's used to produce the website, so it's a basically a markdown file. And then we have the most interesting operation, describe and find compatible, which I will describe shortly. So starting with the describe operation, the describe operation um, gives us in an easy to consume manner all the information we have about a particular pixel format. Um, so f of course, first of all, we get the name, then we get the component data type, uh, which describes how the bits in the components uh, are actually interpreted, what they mean. Um, so I'm using the Vulkan uh, names for the data type. So for example, we have unsigned, uh, normalized, uh, signed, normalized, uh, signed in, test float, etc. cetera. Um, another crucial piece of information, as I mentioned before, is uh, how is this format described? Is it described as a native um, 
so bit fields in a native type, or is it uh, described as bits and bytes uh, in memory in a, in a particular order? Uh, in this case, we have a native type, so we get uh, the description of the native type. So we get each pixel, um, for, for each pixel, what each bit of the, of the pixel format means, so to which component bit it corresponds. Then we get the description of uh, how the pixel format is stored in memory, both for little endian and big endian systems. And you notice in this case, the uh, little endian and big endian descriptions are different. The bytes are just swapped uh, because that's uh, how this works in this case. Um, moving on to an example of um, a format that's described as bytes in memory, uh, we don't get the native type description, but we still get the little endian and big endian description. In this case, the descriptions are the same, but in some cases they may differ. Uh, that's usually the case when we have uh, pixel formats where uh, each component is multiple bytes. So each byte, uh, each component uh, in memory is, is in the same order, so for example RGBA, but then the two bytes of each uh, component may be flipped depending on, on, on system endianness. So, and that's describe. So the next interesting operation we have is, and perhaps even more interesting, is define compatible. The find compatible operation uh, allows us to ask uh, the tool to give us all the pixel formats from a particular family that match uh, another uh, format. So in this case, we're asking the tool to to return all the pixel formats from the SDL2 family that are compatible with the, that particular, particular Vulkan format. And the tool replies that for this format, uh, this format is compatible on all systems with this SDL pixel format, is compatible on little endian system with this, and is compatible on big endian system with um, uh, the, the other uh, pixel format. So by default, the pixel, uh, the find compatible operation uh, does a very strict matching between uh, pixel formats and uh, their components, but it's often useful to relax the matching a bit sometimes, so we have a few flags. One is the treat X as A, uh, which treats uh, unused parts of the, of the value of a pixel format, so also known as X, uh, equal to A. But then we have a flag that, which allows us to treat sRGB data type the same as uh, unorm, and then we have a, a ignore data type um, flag that allows us to just ignore the data type completely and just do bit matching, uh, basically, for the components. Uh, these are useful uh, in different scenarios. Sometimes the formats we want to match don't even have, for example, sRGB uh, variants, so the best we can do is unorm, or they have, don't have X variants, so we are okay matching with uh, the A. Um, so the PFG tool we have been talking about is really just a front end to the PFG uh, library, which is a Python module library, which is where all the magic happens. And it exports a set of operation, which you will see uh, in this case matched exactly what the, um, uh, the, the front end uh, exposes as a command line. So get list formats, list families, document, find compatible with all uh, the flags, and describe. The nice thing about exposing all the functionality as a library is that we can easily be go, uh, go beyond what the tool provides uh, and provide uh, custom solutions. So for example, uh, especially in integration layers between graphics libraries or project uh, programs and libraries, we need to convert one uh, pixel format name to another uh, at, in a compatible way, of course. And this is where, for example, PFG as a library could get, uh, become very useful. So this uh, PFG, um, this Python script, does exactly that for the SDL2 to Vulkan. Uh, I will go quickly through them, uh, through the script. So we import the PFG library, we set up uh, the switch statement, and then for each format we know about in the SDL2 family, we find all comp compatible Vulkan formats. Then depending on whether we actually found something and whether this uh, uh, match that we found was compatible everywhere or, or only on little endian systems or only on big endian systems, then we can produce case statements. And uh, running this, uh, we get um, an output uh, like this automatically. And um, 
without errors, uh, that w which we would have if we would like to do this uh, manually. Um, of course, you can do whatever you want with the library. Uh, it's not switch statement is just one of the operation, uh, you can custom operations you can do. You can produce tables or whatever you need for your application. Um, so the PFG uh, tool and uh, the, the library uh, consists of a core that provides the operations and then of a set of submodules that provide all the information that we have about a particular family. And these are disconnected, so it's very easy to add a new family. Um, first of all, to do so, we should add some documentation under docs family md. And then uh, start adding uh, the code to implement the, all the logic. So that, because I like using test-driven uh, approach in my, my coding, uh, I usually start by adding some tests in test family and adding code in pfg family.py uh, to implement, uh, the, to, to ensure the tests pass and implement that functionality. So P, uh, family pi in PFG should provide the following three functions. First of all, describe uh, format string. That uh, returns a format description, which is a Python class you can see uh, in the code base with all the information about uh, uh, the, the particular pixel format. Uh, you also need to implement the formats uh, function, which returns a list uh, of all the format strings that uh, this family supports. And finally, the document uh, operation that returns the documentation from basically what we have, sorry, that's not pi, that, that's docsfamily.md. Uh, because the operations we need to do internally are mostly similar between families, there are some utility functions in pfg util.py that you can use to make your life easier. And there are, that's uh, the basic, uh, these are the basic steps. You can find more details in the readme uh, section of the code. So first of all, what's the current state? Uh, the current state is that we support 12 uh, families, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, and over 450 pixel formats, which we can use to, to, to describe or uh, match things. Of course, we want more pixel formats, and this is where all you all uh, uh, can come in. Um, please, if you have a favorite pixel format, please consider contributing to, to this. It's on GitHub. It's very easy to contribute. And for the future, uh, the plan is to add compressed and multiplane formats. Uh, I want to add descriptions for multiplane formats. For compressed, no, not so much, but I want to be able to tag them somehow so I can use them for matching so that we know that this pixel format name from Vulkan, for example, uh, represents the same compressed format in whatever uh, DRM uh, family we uh, want to match. And um, I guess uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And questions? Well, that was fast. <laughs> Any questions? I said before, now you have to stand there for 12 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is there anything to do with stridid formats where the, the, the business buffer isn't, um, well, you've, you've got padding at the end of the buffer, um, end of the line for the next? Right. So I'm dealing mostly with the pixel format itself and not image formats. I, I, stride would be more relevant, I guess, to whole image uh, formats. So I'm not dealing with this uh, in this. Project. Um, yeah, it will probably change. Um, any other questions? Is there a GitHub link? Sorry? Uh, yes, if you go to the FOSDEM page for this talk, there's a link to the project and also to some blog posts that uh, describe the project in more, more detail. Okay, well, thank you. Cool.